Mr. Skinners, uh, policies such as communications, data retention, and EU PNR aim at recording our everyday movements and private communications and that of the entire population. So citizens who feel constantly watched and under surveillance will no longer feel uh, free and, and courageously stand up for their rights and for a just society. And the European Court of Justice has twice ruled that um, communications data policies that apply to citizens who are not even remotely connected to crime are disproportionate and it delivered a similar opinion on PNR, on Kennedy PNR. So do you accept that law-abiding citizens with no connection to crime have a right not to have their behavior recorded? And will you implement a moratorium on such mass surveillance and bulk data collection policies covering anybody and more specifically, will you reject the Council's push for a new proposal on communications data retention and also some member states calls for recording information on ferry and railroad travel? Just for two minutes, please. Mr. Breyer, I'm fully aware of the sensitivities uh, of the issue uh, of data retention that you mentioned, uh, both of your group and the wider uh, sensitivities as concerned, which uh, to, grind, to, uh, um, to a certain extent, more to a certain extent, I, I share. And I have, uh, as a former EU civil servant, I have always learned to abide and uh, read carefully the European Court of Justice uh, decisions. And what the court uh, told us to do uh, uh, in, in this case is something that we should consider very carefully. I don't think that we should uh, improvise uh, solutions now that we know the boundaries that the court set. Uh, having said that, this uh, work on data retention now is something that uh, will continue within the Commission, will continue evaluating the situation after the court justice, the, the, the ECJ decisions, but I also see, I understand that there are many cases, many other uh, court cases which are pending. I discussed with, uh, with uh, services and I understood that they would feel uh, safer if they allow for these pending cases also to conclude before we uh, decide the, the further steps. Now, on your more general question, uh, I think I said it twice or three times so far, that the European Union is the world champion of privacy, privacy and data protection. We are the bloc in the world that we have given our citizens the best and the more solid guarantees. And there is one principle that applies, which has to apply ecumenically, which is people's consent, person's consent. So I would find very difficult that we violate this principle in certain parts of our policies while we accept it in certain others. This has to be a universal application. This is part of what the European way of life is, at least for me. Thank you very much. Mr. Breyer, do you have a second question? Yes, please, thank for you. For one minute, please. Thank you for your answer. Respect for court decisions is, is one thing, but um, it is another thing and a policy decision whether you want to apply these ideas to even new uh, ways of mask uh, bulk data collection. And that's why I would like to, to, to ask whether you would be willing to accept as a general measure for security laws that they shouldn't uh, cover the entire in the entire population. And my second question is, in your written answer you write that the right to security must be balanced against the right to privacy. This thinking, however, is flawed because there is no human right to be secure from crime. It's not in the Carter or anywhere. And, and you being a lawyer, um, how can we trust that you respect human rights if you have such a fundamental uh, misunderstanding of them. I mean, we're critical anyway of the wide range of items in your portfolio, but um, that idea of a right to security really fuels our concerns. Mr. Skinas, for one minute to answer that question, please. 
On the first leg of your question, I think that um, the best way to address your fears or your worries, uh, for me, together with um, Commissioner Gabriel um, but, and, and uh, Commissioner Johansson, but I think that would be more for me, is to make sure that uh, when the Digital Services Act uh, is uh, produced by Vice President Vestager, and Commissioner um, Goulart, Commissioner Designate Goulart, that this is the moment where clearly we must find the right balance between policy, security, and guarantee. I do not think that uh, uh, this has to be necessarily an antithetic uh, or zero sum game where someone has to lose out. I think that we can sufficiently address uh, these concerns by this assurance that our security policy should be driven by fundamental rights. There is no security without fundamental rights. It's as simple as that. And fundamental rights should not be seen, as it was the case up to now, as an impact assessment that we have to do at some point at the end. It has to be front-loaded. It has to be done when we decide policy from the very start.